welcome. Thanks. Um, I have a question for you. What is it? Um, what is it that makes you believe in the local church so much? Oh gosh, I need about ten hours. Right? Yeah. Do you want me to just jump in? Jump I'm tell in. You, because Jesus put God put all his eggs in the church basket. Mm -hmm. He has no other method or platform or strategy for reaching the world. It is the church. Jesus said, you know, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. He doesn't say that about anything else. It's the church that is, it was the church that God created brand new from nothing and put us into it when we became believers. So it, he died for it. It's the manifold, it's the mystery, it's the church is it. Um, it's God's strategy for reaching the world. Mm. So your belief of so much, of putting so much in the local church is beautiful. Why do you believe and there's, there's so much power in the local church? What is that? Well, the power is because it's energized by the Holy Spirit. So it's thought up by God, paid for by Jesus' blood, and it's energized by the Holy Spirit. When you've got the Trinity at work in something, you've got all the power, you've got the resurrection power of Jesus at work. And so the church, um, each of us as we're believers in Jesus Christ and we receive the Holy Spirit, we have that same resurrection power living within us. And when we are collectively working together, there are things that the church can do that nobody else can do. The church is the largest entity. It's bigger than any nation. Mm -hmm. It's bigger. It's like 2.3 billion Christians in the world. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. It's bigger than China. It's bigger than any nation. It's bigger than any organization. It's in every continent on the planet. Um, you can go anywhere in the world and you're going to find a church. So it's already there. It moves fast. It has fast distribution. It's got um, this simple administration. It's, it's go. We have this command from Jesus himself go into all the world. We have the strongest motivation, the love of Jesus Christ. The church has everything that is needed. If, in fact, if the church isn't involved in any problem that you want to mention, something's wrong. The church needs to have a place at the table because the church brings seven or eight characteristics that nobody else has. It really is the church. And that's the power of the church. It has, it has distribution. It has numbers. It has the power of God. It has the motivation of Jesus Christ. Um, it has it all to do what God intends. Yeah. Do you think sometimes us as believers, we forget about that power? Oh, I, I think that we completely forget about it. And, and I think it's not just because we're ignorant or whatever. I think it's because in some ways the church has made some big mistakes. Mm -hmm. It's not like the church is perfect. It's not. The church has a history of some things that we're going to have to answer to. You know, um, the Bible talks about that the judgment will start with the household of God. Mm -hmm. And so there are some things we're going to be held accountable for, some massive failures through the centuries, through the millennia mm -hmm. of where the church was not the church, yeah. where the church was not leading the way in compassion, was not leading the way around um, slavery and race and around um, poverty and around the environment. I mean, there's some things that the yeah. church has been silent on, and we're going to answer for that. So the church isn't perfect. But I think the fact that the church isn't perfect and that on a smaller level, people, people are people and they get their feelings hurt. Mm -hmm. They go to a church and somebody wasn't nice to them. Somebody wasn't there when they were, had a crisis. Maybe somebody said no to an idea they had. And so there's the, yeah, there's the history that the church has made some mistakes. And then there's the me and my family got hurt in this place. And people can walk away or just feel like the church is... And it's slow. It's outdated. I mean, it's, it's passe. And so it's not just forgetting the power. It's forgetting that God has put all his eggs in, in this. this basket. Yeah. 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 And I know you're someone who is passionate about people all around the world. I think sometimes also, sometimes Christians in America can start to think that we are it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so what is your encouragement? <laughs> Which we are not. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. What is your encouragement to us here that live in America to realize that this church is so grand and, and we are not it? Yeah. The growth is in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. In the Southern Hemisphere, the growth of the church is astronomical. And there will be more believers on the continent of Africa um, than in where we are in no time flat. I mean, the history of Christianity is moving in a different right. direction. Mm -hmm. So. Um, as Americans, we should, first of all, pay attention to that. And secondly, again, just going back to the nature of the church, what I was 
sort of alluding to in a very fast way is that in Ephesians um, 3, where Paul talks about how God took and, and broke down the dividing wall that existed between Jews and Gentiles, and he didn't say the Jews had to be like Gentiles, and the Gentiles don't have to be like Jews. He created something brand new, mm -hmm. and it's called the church. And um, so when the church is, is at the center there, we're going to be all about reconciliation. The church, this is one of those places of failure um, where we have not, um, we have not seen ourselves as part of the body and that our brothers and sisters around the world are and next door mm -hmm. and in the next block that we're all part of the body mm -hmm. and when we see ourselves as that function of breaking down the dividing wall we're going to lead with um, with diversity mm -hmm. and unity and breaking down those walls of division and when we do that that's going to that makes that means everybody around the world on every continent is part of the body and needed, yeah. and their voice is needed. Yeah. And we can't do it without each other. Mm -hmm. We need each other. And I think it's such just, I mean, it is what God set it up to be. It's a beautiful picture of what we will be spending eternity with. Yes, the this is what heaven will, will be, look like. Exactly. Yes. So we should get used to that. You know, this is what we're going into, right? right. The church is just yeah. such a beautiful way that God does all his work through. Okay, well, I want to know from you, when you get to the end of your world and the end of your day and you get to meet Jesus, what do you want your legacy? What do you want to be said about you? here. That I took him at his word. Philippians 4.13 in the Amplified says, I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am ready to and equal. I'm ready for and equal to anything through the strength that he infuses in me. I want that to be what people know about me. That I took him at his word. That I believed he was sufficient for everything that he asked me to do, that I trusted him, and I did it. I did it believing that he would be with me and he would help me and he would give me the strength. That's what 